Hello guys, welcome back to uh, Norsden Lantanisa with Dr. Aeronautics. Can you believe I haven't been to Norsden Land until the, uh, or rather since the 29th of March. I've been gone since the snows of winter covered this land. Uh, real life is extremely busy and it's extremely hard for me to get on and, and do this, but um, we're actually going to fly today. We're going to orbit the Earth for the very first time. So here is our mission that we're doing today. We're doing Beach 6, uh, which is a manned mission using the Atlas Booster. It is comparable to Mercury, uh, I want to say, Friendship 7. Um, that mission, I think that's MA6 or whatever the MA or whatever the letters is. I know the first is M, and I know the last is 6. The goal of the mission, as you can read here, is to go into orbit, decay, uh, or rather deorbit, and land safely. So here is everything we have to do. Uh, again, the red means that it's Minecraft limitations, so you don't do that. Um, so with everything done, uh, there's pretty much nothing we have to do except we have to count down and launch and fly. So that's all the fun stuff. So all the annoying stuff will be taken care of. You might remember that Beach 5 was a failure. Um, after a long time, we have finally reflown Beach 5 and confirmed that the reason the retro sequence did not deploy properly is because the ASCS switch was not switched to automatic, which meant that the craft had no control because there was no human aboard and everything else. So once we figured that one out, we reflew the craft and it re-entered and landed safely with a maximum G value of 6 Gs with impulses to 7. So that's uncomfortable and downright painful, but not um, by any means uh, dangerous to a pilot. Uh, I've also been busy in uh, Norriston Land designing the next best thing. Uh, the next the next future mission, Surf, as you might have seen, this is the last uh, beach mission. We're now moving on to Surf, which is the Gemini um, the Gemini look-alike. And I've been designing the next rocket for that. Uh, the Gemini capsule holds two men, so that'll be the first uh, the first change is that we're going to have two astronauts at the same time, and uh, all of the missions will be orbital. So this mission is going to be three orbits, um, and as you might know, an orbit is 90 minutes around the Earth, at least when you're in low Earth orbit. The higher you go, the longer the period is. Um, and because of that, I'm not going to be able to run through the entire uh, mission. A lot of it will actually be off screen because I'm not going to do a four and a half hour video, of course. And I did it again. I'm not going to do a four and a half hour video plus the time when I'm just out here doing nothing. Um, so I'm not going to be showing some of it. Um, each five was that? Yes, that was orbital. So we're we're still using the same orbital rocket that we designed, which is basically the Atlas that's been reconnected and refitted to the pad. Uh, we're all ready for takeoff once we do the uh, pre-entrance checklists uh, for the wake up uh, and everything else for the astronaut. Then we're going to go through the pre-flight, the flight. I'll show some interesting things. Um, unfortunately, just like the Beach 3 mission, where we flew in space for the very first time, not orbitally, but in space, the um, there was way too much to do, and I couldn't do all of it. And this time, uh, it's kind of like that as well. It's loaded with stuff. But about two orbits into the mission, there's less and less things. So the good thing is if I have to skip something, I can come back to it later, and we don't have to uh, continue doing that. But there's some really neat stuff, like looking at cities, stellar navigation, 
Uh, we There's even one point where it allows us to turn around and watch the sunset through the window, which is actually pretty cool. Um, that's something that's interesting that I'm looking forward to. Not, you know, the control tests are boring because there's a 99% chance they're going to work and nothing is going to be like, oh my gosh, this isn't working for some reason. But, number one, it's the 50s. Well, actually, this may have been 1962. Okay, whatever. It still feels like the 50s. And number two, um, people were crazy and didn't didn't know how they would do in space. So, you gotta cut them slack and stay to uh, stay to how how things are. Okay, so I am going to stop the video until the next night, and we wake up and go through the whole procedure. So I will see you guys. Uh, next Minecraft morning. I just now realized what an efficient use of space this is here. This flashing back and forth, it's not doing it now, but now it's doing it. That's just like one of the most efficient uses of space now that I can recall. It flashes back and forth so that you can see both of them. Alright, so it is time for sleep. Let's try this again. It is time for sleep. It's 2 o'clock, which means it's time to wake up. So then, um, yep, just like normal, we'd have a shower and shave, we'd have breakfast. But we can't have breakfast because I'm not hungry, which is kind of dumb. Um, my friend and I were actually thinking about making a throw-up mod where, like, you would have to gauge how far you want to get the, um, food bar and fill yourself up and be careful to do the math and, and subtract and make sure that what you're eating doesn't go over 10 bars and then if you go over 10 food bars then it should empty out to like 2 bars of food thus indicating that you've thrown up okay um, so now we go downstairs for the pre-flight physical surprise, you're not ready to fly oh really? no, you're actually ready to fly because if not then this would be the only time and this is difficult, which means I didn't have the only time to do it now, except for the fact that the previous, or rather, um, later missions are going to be easier. Why? Because I said so. Okay. So instead of biosensor application, because there's no such thing in Minecraft, we're going to see reference number 22, which is an onboard equipment list. So, I'm going to read off um, what we have. So microphone filmer does, d viewer does not exist. We do have an exercise device. It's a resistance band. Food. Two tubes, a potato tube and a carrot tube. And uh, one candy bar, which I'm substituting with seeds. I think the guy that flew, like, literally actually said, I'm not flying unless you make me, let me have a candy bar. I'm actually eating candy right now as I speak. I think that's like, they were like, oh, what the heck, it gives you sugar anyway. Okay, 1,000 cc's of water, that's a liter by the way, um, two 35 millimeter cameras which we don't have, they actually took one for color photography and one for UV photography which is actually pretty darn cool, I'm going to go look up those pictures when I'm done with this. They also took a light meter, a visual test device, a spectrometer, color and brightness tester which all don't exist in Minecraft unfortunately. Um, so I'm bringing a crafting table instead. A boat will substitute as the container. Uh, I do not have viewing glasses. Um, there is a wire antenna in the survival kit, which we don't have because it's Minecraft. B-I-M. Extra length of the hose, so I brought rope instead. Uh, maps, got them right here. Extra film, again, B-I-M. Tape for lights, B-I-M. Uh, knee pad and paper. I actually have paper on my desk, so I'm all set to go. Spare bulbs, uh, BIM. Same with Helmo and Elbit. Uh, wow. Let's try this again. Elbow and helmet pads. Flashlight with red filter. Don't ask me how that works. Scissors. We have shears instead. Basically the same thing. Uh, vest and mirror. So we have a shiny vest. Here's the mirror right there. Ha ha. Two arm mirrors don't exist. We have a watch. We have a knife, a pocket knife we don't have. 
uh, pliers we don't have boy that was close uh, we don't have a waterproof equipment bag so I'm bringing an ink sack to take its place and we're gonna bring a pickaxe because it's my craft and that is all the stuff we're taking so for the rest of this this does not belong in space so that is everything that we need um, so this checklist is now complete. So now we have to put on the pressure suit. So let's get that, that, I'm wearing a piece, that, that, oxygen gear. Do I have, where are my, where are my gloves? I, th I thought I had gloves. Do I not have gloves? Alright, let me see what's going on. Okay, so I did not have gloves, Minecraft limitation. Okay, so, um, let's take these off, and in place we're going to, oh man, what's the order? I'm pretty sure it's down, and I don't have to put the helmet on yet, but we'll put the oxygen gear on standby, just because it's part of it. Okay, we should now be outfitted for space. Good. Pressure suits on. Enter the transfer van. And then we have that pressure suit oxygen purge. I think we go the long way for this. Final pre-flight briefing. You're going to space. Whatever. Suit gloves, I really don't care about because it's a Minecraft limitation. I'm really starting to get annoyed by that. I know you can put gloves, you can wear gloves by going like that, but I, it just doesn't, you know suddenly you roll the mouse and then oh no your gloves are off so it doesn't really make sense uh... if we do a leak check does that mean we have to secure the um... no we don't have to secure the helmet visor but we'll just put it on anyway just because go on go. oh right hmm i should think about get wearing something else on there as well um, oh, Galactic Craft. No structure whatsoever. Sure, a glass bubble. We'll just go with that. Turns out that a glass bubble is extremely hard to keep pressure inside, but we won't tell the developer that because, ow. Uh, wow. I need to do something about my frame rate. While I'm down here, Leak check. Not really operative, but whatever. Alright, let's try and do this right now. Okay, we did it. Enter and ascend Grand Tree at 515. Let's go ahead and change a few things up here. We want some things more accessible than others. It's going to waste time. Okay, so this is what it looks like. We're going, uh, going up for launch. Uh, I just got dizzy because I thought I was looking up and I was looking down. This rocket is taller, uh, which means we are going up another level um, to actually the top level. Hopefully the Gemini rocket won't be any higher. Capsule pre-entrance checks. Safety pins installed. Hand controller locked. Transmit switch off. Abort handle locked. And squib switch off. And at 5.20 a.m., we enter the capsule.
Okay, welcome back aboard the capsule. We're here uh, in Florida, as you can see here. So uh, we're inside the capsule now. I'm not going to run through the um, takeoff procedure. I'm going to do that off camera because we're going to have a six hour video if I do. We'll come back at T minus five minutes. If you really want to see this, then go watch um, episode 40. We go through the whole checklist there. Um, but until launch time, minus five minutes, um, I will be doing all of this off screen so that you guys don't get bored out. Keep in mind, we have a four and a half hour flight in front of, in, in front of us. So neat thing for you guys who actually watch my, um, watch my flights, uh, watch more than one flight the whole time. Um, you may have noticed that I've been doing this a lot. And the reason I do that is because the altitude marker isn't visible. However, I figured out that if you pause it, it suddenly appears. So now when we read the altitude indicator, all we have to do is just pause the video enough for me to see it. And then we can actually check our altitude that way. See you at launch time. Okay, we're now at T minus seven minutes. Um, so now we check time with the blockhouse, and that is my signal to get my timer ready uh, so that. What was it that I needed to uh, be able to check? Besides the video length. I guess the answer is no, I do not remember, but we gotta um, keep going. So, uh, transmit switch to UHF. Squib switch to arm. All Mercury stations, status Auto check at T minus four. Arm. Launch complex status check. Azusa, go. T minus six Guidance. minutes. We're go. Restraint Mercury capsule. Go flight. AMR telemetry. We're go flight. Um, Stop. Free on flow. I think I looked up. last time Electrical. that there was an actual Com. telescope button go that flight. you could retract. At T-minus 3 minutes 45 seconds, all systems are go at this time. From what I recall. Yeah, there's not any there. Uh, then, uh, in that case, you're ready, so launch control switch to ready. Uh, Position arms and hands, and uh, you're ready to go. So, at T minus five minutes, uh, the range control will give the go for launch All if it is. Status check at T minus three minutes and counting. That should be pulse. coming up in about We're 20 go, seconds. We're go, flight. Hydraulics. We're go. Guide. We're go. RF systems. Uh, We're go. Landline instrumentation. Go flight. Telemetry. Go! Mercury. We are go. Fuel launch control. Go! Pneumatics. Go. Water systems. We are go. Range Complex control electrical. has given the We're all go. clear to Missile launch. Power. So now the only go. thing that's keeping Guidance us ground station. on the ground We're is go. launch control. Range support. And that We're sequence go. will execute at Azusa. T minus 35 go. seconds. Range weather update. Range clear. All system status checks go at this time. Next event is at T minus two minutes. And then things get really interesting. T minus four minutes. We're at the two minute point in our countdown. Status check. Aeromed. Go. Minus three minutes. Yes. We're go flight. Sequence. We're go. Electrical. We're go. ASCS. Go. RCS. Uh, we're go. Calm. Go flight. TM. Go. Flight. Go flight. Stony. And we're, we're go. T minus All two minutes. So now the free on coolant flow will be stopped. Uh, and then the next event to occur is the uh, launch sequence of T minus 35 seconds. We'll launch and then I get right to work. So I'm actually going to um, pause this video for now. Um, let me see if I'm free to restart the video. So when I do a communications change to HF, 
T plus 10 minutes after the control we are system is checked, I will have to restart the video. So after we do the control system check, assuming we finish on time. T minus 1 minute 15 seconds. All Mercury Station status check at T minus 45 seconds. I'm going seconds. to stop the video until we're at T minus 40. Go so we're just about T minus 40 go. seconds now. Water system. Um, uh, we're there's go. 35. So the Great fan clear. valves Mercury are closing. Capsule. The we're fuel go. tank All and the launch up, tank are pressurizing the vehicle and will be given power. Shortly the boom will drop into the ignition and will have to be stayed in operational, operational liftoff at 9.30 Eastern. Set all recorders to fast T-15 seconds and counting. Right, just about T-minus 20 seconds to launch. T-minus 10, 15, 9, 8, 7, 6, 10, 5, 9, 4, 8, 3, 7, Six, five, zero, four. Roger, and the clock timing is, is a little bit different for this one, and we have liftoff. Vehicle Let's check the clock is indeed lit. operating, and we're moving. Fifteen seconds into the flight altitude. So we're now fifteen feet. seconds of the flight altitude is approximately two thousand feet. At thirty seconds, I will get my first status report. Altitude 5,000 feet. 30 seconds into the flight. The fuel is 100% approximately. The cabin pressure is. Altitude 10,000 feet. 5 psi. I hate that. One mile downrange. Uh, the current DC amps is 32. This one is a lot easier than the previous one. Seconds. Altitude, altitude 20,000 feet. One minute into the flight. T plus one minute. Control Entering fuel maximum. about 98 percent. Cabin pressure is altitude 30,000 feet. Five psi. Half miles downrange. Oxygen is uh, 90 percent. Altitude 40,000 feet. There are approximately uh, 32 DC amps. Minute, 20 seconds. Uh, tower vibration altitude is 50. Five thousand feet. Altitude now ninety thousand feet. One minute thirty seconds to the flight altitude sixty-five thousand feet. Five thousand feet. Hundred thousand feet. Uh, fuel approximately eighty thousand feet. Most sense tracking go. Pressure, uh, five psi. Altitude ninety-five thousand feet. Uh, oxygen is altitude one hundred thousand feet. One minute thirty seconds to the flight. This isn't so bad. I'm actually um, quite used to it. Altitude now up to 25 miles, acceleration. 10 miles downrange. T plus two be. minutes. Uh, fuel Allergen. is about 98%. Cabin pressure is 5 psi. Uh, oxygen approximately 90%. DC amps two 32. And we flight. have Beco. Altitude 35 miles. I'm doing fine. That's actually part of the downrange. list, and I actually did that on my own. How about that? We have second stage ignition. All systems are go. Jet, tower jet on green. Auto retro switch to off. Retro jet fuel, uh, fuel switch to off. Oh, where the heck is that? Retro jet, retro jet, retro jet, retro jet. Um, to come back to this. Three minutes. Uh, fuel approximately 98%. Cabin pressure uh, 5 psi. Yes, it is holding. Um, oxygen is now 90%. Um, and the DC amps is about 32. Okay, let, let's retro jet. There it is. Disabled. Now, there better be something in there that says enable, because if, if it doesn't, we're in trouble. Uh, 3 minutes, 30 seconds, status report, fuel 98%, uh, cabin pressure is, uh, we're down now to about 1.5 G, by the way, uh, 5 PSI, oxygen is 90%, and the O2 amps, I'm sorry, the oxygen, what, the DC amps is about 32 uh, we're going to do a complete voltage check now. 
27, 27, 27, 27, 27, 27, 0. So we're all set. Uh, four minutes, we're a little bit behind. Uh, fuel, 98%. Cabin pressure is holding at 5 PSI. Oxygen, approximately 90%. And the amps is about 32. So we should be getting a report now that our trajectory is good. Uh, fuel is about 98%. Cabin pressure is still holding at 5 PSI. Oxygen is 90%. Uh, current DC amps is 32. Astronaut is go. All systems are go. We're now up to just about 5 Gs again of acceleration. We should be getting um, capsule turnaround around five minutes, five seconds. Should be getting, uh, we're at five minutes, five seconds now. Um, capsule turnaround complete. We seem to be having a little bit more fuel than expected. Okay, we have uh, capsule separation light is on green and the turnaround has started. So we had a little bit more fuel than anticipated. Um, what is that? Seco came about uh, five to ten seconds later than expected. Uh, booster motion's good. Um, we're getting just about uh, zero g longitudinal acceleration, so I'm feeling fine. No weird sensations, uh, and we're not quite to six fifty but that means reference number four. So we're coming right up to it. And 13, 14, 15. Okay, control systems check. Uh, manual and automatic fuel, um, 98, 99, I want to say. So, let's get that real quick. 98, 99. Uh, manual fuel, full direct. RSCS switch rate command. Uh, wow. Okay, I don't like what's going on. We ha we just had a uh, serious control malfunction. I don't know what's going on there, but the system seems to be dampening the uh, control. Uh, rates are dampening. Um, I want to know why that happened. Um, that should have not happened. Uh, let's try... Um, rate command aux damp. So let's try going to aux on uh, rate command. Okay, and now now we're not getting that problem. Uh, so we're going to pitch up at four degrees per second. Okay, and we're pitching. That's good. Um, and the aux should be dampening, I guess. I'm not sure where that switch is. Okay, uh, everything looks good there. So ASCS, aux damp, RCS rate command, uh, manual fuel handle, uh, pull direct. That's already been done. Initiate a four degree per second yaw to the right. All right, so there's a nice yaw. Um, everything seems to be good. Uh, manual fuel handle push. There we go. And we did get dampening. Uh, RCS switch to auto. Uh, ACS fly-by wire. How are we doing on time? Uh, 10 minutes. Not good. Um, fly-by-wire, zero rate at 30 degree y'all, right? Uh, 
Okay, so there's that. This is actually really easy to um, control. Uh, reset ACS and RCS switches. I assume that means right command aux on. And there's the end of the video. Okay, so we have to do something right now. There's communications change to HF at um, T plus 10 minutes. We seem to be good for now. So um, we're not at 10 minutes yet. Uh, initiate a 4 degree per second y'all left. Manual fuel handle push rate command. Okay, so we've pushed that. Observe rate dampening. We did get that. RCS switch back to auto. Um, and yeah, there's there's rate dampening. That's good. Okay, uh, zero rate at 30 degree, y'all. Uh, yeah, we're pretty darn close to that. Um, yeah, we're not going to have enough time. It's now 10 minutes, so we're switching to uh, HF. Okay, we're now HF. Uh, 10 minutes in. Um, 13 minutes in, we re re uh, remove the chest strap, so we're still good to go. Reset ACS and RCS switches. Um, AC, ASCS and RC. RSCS. Wow. I need to do a lot better with that. Pull manual handle. Uh, initiate a 4 degree per second. Um, you all right? And it did say observe rate dampening. We must be in rate command. There we go. Okay. And now we put RCS to auto and we notice further rate dampening when we 0.5 degrees per second. Uh, that's perfect. Actually, that's really, really neat. I'm actually happy to see that. Um, zero rate to 30 degree, y'all. You'll right when we go to ACS um, fly by wire. 30 degree roll right. Uh, four degree per second roll right. Okay. And then we do rate command. Where are we? Thir 13 minutes. We're still good. Um, okay, that doesn't seem to be dampening. Let's go the other way now. Four degree per second. Uh, roll left. Okay, everything seems just fine there. Uh, manual fuel handle push rate command. Okay, so that's pushed. Um, dampening within three degrees per second. I don't know, is it? We are in fly-by-wire. Perhaps we have to uh, stop the roll. All right, yeah, that looks good. Um, we still have time. RCS, RC, whatever, switch to auto. We're there. Um, Fly-by-wire, zero rate at zero degree roll. Okay. Don't seem to be doing that. Um, use high thrust jets or check them at this point. You don't need to do that. There's another one. Uh, reset ACS, RCS. Uh, four degree per second pitch down. And we should see dampening. Yep, we see dampening. Um, there's a pull. Push rate command. Four degree per second. That's good. Uh, fly by wire. And we've run out of time. Okay, so. Uh, now at 13 minutes, chest straps. Oh, that's it. So we don't have to do UHF until um, 14 minutes. So we have 30 more seconds. Record manual and automatic fuel. Okay, we're done. So manual fuel, what is that, like 80%? 82? 98? And we're done. Okay, so um, 14 minutes in. Wow, we actually have about 10 seconds left. I don't see any problem with leaving us in this configuration for now. Um, we should be fine.
Okay. We skipped something. Uh, a reference which, for some reason, had been going on. Um, Okay, so we're go on our orbit. Uh, I'm no expert, but 168 kilometers should be good enough to stay up about five or six orbits, maybe more. Um, so we should be good in that department. Um, so now we can run through the checklists. So I've now reset the uh, auto, auto retro and um, other circuit breaker. Uh, the other things we have to do in reference three are the emergency. Yeah, we did that. Uh, emergency drogue deploy fuse uh, to off. There's emergency drogue deploy. There it is. So that's off. Uh, the landing bag switch should be off. Good. Uh, retro delay should be normal. Where is retro? Where was that one? Oh, there it is. Okay. Retro delay normal. Uh, auto warn tones are on. Um, fuel seems to have gone crazy. Well, that was quick, and now that one's out. Um, retro manual fuse switch. Where is that? Where are you, retro manual fuse? There you are. That's off. Uh, tower jet and cap set total light should be out five minutes after capsule set. So, I mean, I guess that's taken care of. All right, now we're at uh, 17 minutes. So, uh, we're approaching the coast of Africa now, and I have to say when we're going over it. Just check our fuel, make sure that nothing else bad is going on here. Oh, this looks really wacky. Not sure exactly why that is. I know we're at an angle, but still. I mean, okay, so it looks like we haven't yet reached the coast of Africa, but we've got to be really close. Um, now we need to go to um, 21, reference number 21, that will include instructions on what we're supposed to do. Okay, first orbit. Canary Islands plus the mid-African coast should be easily recognizable. Yep, we just flew over them. They're right there. Okay, we've just hit uh, North Africa. We're over North Africa now. Um, island in Africa, a few miles. There should be a few clouds unless meteorological occurrence. Uh, yeah, I would call that a few clouds. Um, if not none. Uh, the anti-Atlas range of the Atlas Mountains should be visible. I, th I think that's this guy here. Not 100% sure, though. Um, at 23 minutes, the Ahagar Mountain should be visible, um, along with Lake Chad, which said it should be in an intermediate level, and then uh, something on...
something on the tropics. Yeah, so so the change and I think right now our yeah our windows facing towards space so that we can't see anything outside there. Um, but we might be able to see a little bit of uh, variation in between the Congo jungle and the Sahara, uh, in the sub-Sahara savanna and South Africa, which is quite orange, and then eventually Lake Victoria and Lake Albert will be visible. Um, so apparently I'm supposed to observe that. Uh, next activity uh, is at 24 minutes. That's a yaw maneuver. Uh, we still have four minutes to look, look out for Africa. Um, we are running pretty low on fuel. Um, we have no manual fuel left, so we might have to um, not do the yaw maneuver. I think we should be able to use automatic fuel uh, for this, but if not, um, we need to be very careful. Okay, we're facing straight down now. I guess, yeah, that's the savanna. I think. Just that's our camera that we have that looks straight down. Or right now it's looking straight down because of the way the capsule's oriented. Yeah, that yaw maneuver better include instructions for me because I um, I need to know that I'm doing it out of the right tank because if I find that it's out of the manual, I'll have to know. And rather, if I because if I use the auto for for manual stuff that I'm not supposed to use, we might end up running out of fuel, and we need fuel for reentry, else we burn up. Alright, let's check the periscope. Still uh, more savanna. Actually, it says that we should be right over the Sahara Desert, but I do not know why it looks like that. Uh, I have no idea. That looks right. I'm not sure about that. But that, that looks like sand. I don't know what that looks like. Uh, the yaw maneuver at 24 minutes. Okay. I'll tell you, I'm not sure why we're moving around because I thought the uh, the whole point of the ASCS mode was to um, automatically dampen and put you in orbit attitude, but we're not in orbit attitude. We coming up on the Nile River? Why is it doing that? No, we're not to the Nile River yet. I take it this ring here marks what we can see. Oh, I think I see, yes, I can see just the northern fringe of the Congo jungle. So that is visible now. That's pretty cool to see. Yeah, I'm not sure what the river is, though. Um, we should be over to Lake Chad. I wonder why I can't see that. There's some more mountains. Yeah, I can't see Lake Chad for some reason. Okay. Um, we're coming up on the end of this video, and then we're going to have to... I'm going to do that now, because we're coming up to the all maneuver. Uh, okay, so at 24 minutes... Yep, reference number five, y'all knew. Okay, so let's check this out.
All right, so it will be used to check the periscope as a yaw reference when large angular errors exist. Switch to fly-by-wire control system. Done. Now it says set up a low yaw right at one to two second rate. That's a little bit less um, responsive. There we go. Well, we're, we have a yaw going. Allow it to drift until the yaw is approximately 60 degrees. So we'll just let that go out a little bit. So this delineated 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What's 90 divided by 6? It's 15. So um, right about there is 60 degrees of y'all. So let's go ahead and stop this thing. Okay. Stabilize the spacecraft rates to zero. So now we have to stabilize every rate here. That was not y'all. What is that? Roll? I need to watch my fuel because we do not have a lot. Okay. Okay, everything is at zero. Observe the motion of the ground track through the periscope on both low and high magnification. Whoa, we're over the Congo jungle now. That's awesome. Set up a low yaw left motion and stabilize the spacecraft at zero yaw, zero roll, and minus 34 pitch. We're pretty close to the pitch, actually. Um, so now we need zero roll, so we roll left, right? Nope, we're going to roll right. Okay. Again, watching the fuel. And it asks for zero y'all, so... It's kind of confusing watching this because um, the panel does not face the right direction, so I have to get used to the actual... Um, maneuvers and for some reason the ASCS mode isn't dampening so that's further confusing me so that's so I have to rely on the rate indicators and I think that's why they installed that we're pretty close to minus 34 pitch okay there's zero roll let's go ahead and zero it out that's not zero that's still not zero come on there we go oh, nope come on All right, that's close enough. Uh, minus 34 pitch. Yeah, all right, let's take a look. Seriously, that's minus... They have some really weird... Um... That's a really weird zero frame reference. Oh, man, yeah, that's the Congo for sure. Look at that. Still doing all right on fuel. So yeah, um, wacky and awkward, but yeah, the y'all worked. Okay, so those are the results of that. So now the next thing is 28 minutes. Right now we have to do a dark side checklist, which is just in time. So reference number 24, dark side checklist 24. Reference 14, right? 14. We've got to do this before we go. Okay, check flashlight readily available. Position the cabin light switch to both. Uh, photo lights off. Place red filters over the cabin lights, whatever. Place, place filters over the window. Why? Uh, warning lights dim. Warning lights dim. Uh, thruster warm up procedure. Why do I do that? Yeah, we're, we're going to be going into night pretty soon. It was actually kind of funny. What what prompted me was I looked down at, at the land, and I was like, whoa, it kind of looks dark down there. I was like, oh, shoot, night's coming. 
that's the neat thing is you look down you, you, you know about five minutes before it comes because the land under you is dark um, so it's pitch up pitch down roll right roll left y'all right uh, y'all left so what is it pitch up pitch down um, y'all right y'all left uh, roll right roll left let's go ahead and zero that right All right, something just lagged. All right, still doing all right on fuel. Um, we got a y'all thing to null, and now we got a pitch to null. Okay, we're pretty nulled out right now. Um, so yeah, the fly-by wire mode got a little bit of a workout. That's good, though, because that's what we're supposed to do. Uh, apparently, they want me to wear an eye patch. Is it seriously that necessary, guys? Did you seriously think space was going to be that dark? Man, these people went all out when they designed this. They're like, in case he's blinded by not being able to see in the dark, we're going to give him this. And in case that doesn't work, we're going to give him this. But in the event that that doesn't work, we're going to do this. Man, these people are just mighty respectable. Okay, so dark side checklist is done. Ah, is it 30 minutes? Yes, it's 30 minutes. Let's give a 30-minute report. Next activity is at 34 um, is sunset. 30-minute report. Okay, um, reference 11. So we have to report a few things. And this should catch some things that might be a little bit dangerous. Okay. Use panel. Only report abnormal fuse switch positions. Emergency drogue, we did that. Um, retro man, we did that. Okay, so squib switch arm, auto retro jet arm, ASCS, fly by wire, RSCS auto, gyro normal, um, manual fuel handle uh, pushed, automatic fuel handle. Where the heck is an automatic fuel handle? I don't know about some automatic fuel handle. I have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, retro delay. Uh, where's that? Normal. Sequence panel. Everything's normal there. Auto fuel. 33%. Okay, when is the next activity? 34 is sunset. We still have one more minute. Uh, manual fuel, zero. Attitude, roll pitch y'all, roll 80, y'all, um, minus, what, 350, pitch, 10. Periscope window adjustment, maybe we'll get to see sunset after all. Oh, looks like we're over Ethiopia now. Earth path indicator position, uh, horizon. Uh, retro sequence time. 432. Capsule lapse time 3327. Cabin pressure 5 psi. Um, cabin temperature. Where the heck is that? 75? It's nice. Uh, oh, it's time again. Good thing I have that rolling. I would not have caught that. I would have been talking to nothing. Do we have a humidity gauge in here? I did not think we had a humidity gauge. I got a suit environment. 
got a temperature, got a pressure. I don't see a humidity thing. Uh, I, don't, I don't see a coolant quantity thing either. What the heck? Okay, well, whatever. All right, sunset's coming up. Eh. All right, so good. I'm I'm getting used to this thing. I'm gonna watch the sunset out through the periscope. Why does it keep doing that? Does it press this thing? Oh, we can filter it if we need to. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. All we got to do now is just keep the sun in the window. We still have a little bit of time before we go into sunset. Let's keep on keeping on. Um, oops. Oh, check that out. This rate indicator is way better. So now I know exactly what is... That's awesome. Yeah, this is, this is how you fly it. You fly it out of this thing. Don't want to get too picky on fuel. Suit is good. Um, what is that suit temperature 70, suit pressure 6. Uh, main O2, both about 80. Okay, DC volts. 24, 24, 24, 24, 24, 0. Good. ASCS. It's 150 volts. Fans are both 150. All switches on board except. Oh come on! I don't have time for that. It's this is going to get really boring. Suit uh, temperature 70. Cabin temperature 70. Total time six and a half minutes. Yeah, right. We probably thirty or thirty-seven minutes. Oh, um, sunset. Right. So the next activity is at forty-three minutes. So I think we're starting to get out of that extremely busy first phase. It's it's like. Have you ever ridden like, um, a, I don't know, good example of it. Um, ah, okay. Have you ever been on an interstate and um, you start in the middle of some crazy big city with gridlock, there's stoplight after stoplight after stoplight, and eventually the stoplights are further and further and further and further apart before you start picking up speed and eventually you convert to a freeway. Um, that's basically what's going on here, I think, is we're finally getting to this stage of where the end of stuff, and it's not nearly as bad as I thought. Um, I thought I would take a lot more time during the skill, but I guess they really analyzed this when they did it. So yeah, 43 minutes is the next activity. We're at 38 minutes, and that is actually a night horizon check. Um, which is a manual control check, and yeah, we are out of manual fuel, so that's not going to happen. Which means the next activity is at 49 minutes from a ground report, which is basically orbital information. So I'm actually going to watch the sunset, and then I'm going to stop the video um, for some time, because uh, we are... Um, at 39. So yeah, I'm not going to wait 10 minutes for um, 
for the uh, next activity. I keep looking down for some reason. Here's my time right here. I guess I can just assume that they match. Yeah, they match. Whoa. I don't get why it keeps doing that. It doesn't make sense. Well, this is an Orbiter 2003 mod, so the fact that I'm trying to use 2003 and 2010, I'm actually surprised it's as successful as it is. Man, this is how you watch a sunset. Oh, that's why they put a window... I see. The reason they use the window filter is not because of the... Um, not because of the the darkness that they thought there was like something bad with it. It's because the sun's low in the sky. See, this is why you do those things because you can figure this out. Space is fun. I want to build a space station now. I just want to spend... Okay, I checked that back. I want to spend half of my time in Norsden Land and half of my time up here looking at Norsden Land. Or space. And I think we get to do a star... Um, a star check after this. We, we get to look at celestial bodies and stuff. Actually, you know what? Maybe the reason why ACS, ASCS isn't working is because one of the fuses is out. And when I say not working, I mean it's not like turning us, it's not turning us around, and it should be. I think there's actually a way that I can disable the um, manual thrusters, actually. Oh, here it comes. I can't, I can't tell if that's Venus or Jupiter. And that is how you watch a sunset. We'll be back at 49 minutes. All right, so we're back a little bit early ahead of time because I just realized um, part of the um, manual control check um, involves looking at the horizon. And I can do some, some aspects of that. So this is reference number 23. It's the last one. Thank you. 
not in order. And, uh, align to orbit attitude, can't do that. Pitch up, turn pitch to the orbit. Nope. Very five low rates. I, I guess it's just, yeah, that thing. So I can look out the window. I can tell you I can see the horizon. Uh, the only way I can really see it is because of the absence of stars that kind of forms the limb of the Earth. Um, same thing on... What? I, I just don't get that. Oh, okay, that's why. It's when I pitch up and then do that, it just jerks out for some reason. I, I don't know. The thing confuses me. All right, 49 minutes, so we'll be back. Okay, so it's 49 minutes now. We're going to take a look at um, what the ground says we're at in terms of orbital information. And that is our new orbit. Um, the periapsis altitude's up a little bit more. That's probably because of drag. Uh, this orbit looks good, eccentricity 0 0.008, it asked for me to know that for some reason. It says eccentricity, etc. So, yeah, it looks fine. Um, we're actually going to go really high, or we are high now, rather. We're at 280, now down at 266 kilometers. We're going to go down to 172. That's probably why it was so difficult to control down there, is because that was very, uh, very dense atmosphere. Hopefully, um, we'll have enough control fuel. In the event that we don't have enough control fuel to, um, or rather, in the event that we have to use control fuel and we use so much of it that we're going to run out, we will have to abort the mission and do an early retro sequence. Hopefully, that won't happen, but you never know. So that's that. And at 51 minutes, um, we're going to switch to AC ASCS mode, and then things are going to get interesting. So we have to do reference 18 first after switching to ASCS, and I think that's the celestial object check. So yeah, 18 is star tracking and star navigation device procedure. So that's going to be really interesting. And it's time. So let's go to ASCS and hopefully it will be able to write us properly. Okay, we're moving. Let's see what's going on here. trying to figure out what it's going to do with us. So it's supposed to go to zero pitch. Um, z no, minus 34 pitch, zero roll, zero yaw. Um, but I guess as long as it just nulls the rates out for now, it's okay. But in the future, when we get close to re-entry, um, we had better be in orbit attitude. Or rather, retro... That's probably what it is, is that we're not at the retro sequence, so it's not putting us in retro attitude. Hopefully that's what it is. Okay, reference 18. So let's see what we can do here. From orbit attitude, yeah, that, that figures. We're not in orbit attitude. Uh, but we're pretty close. Yo, roll, roll is the only thing that's off by a lot. Yaw and pitch are within 60 degrees each other. The spacecraft will be pitched up to approximately 34 degrees. Yeah, right. A star will be chosen which falls on the approximate center line of the window. Well, we can do that now. If we stop moving. Is that... Maybe that's what it's doing, is it's just slowly rolling us around to, um, to orbit. Hopefully that's what it... So it's, it's doing something with roll, and it's doing something with pitch. It's not really doing anything with y'all. Oh, now it's doing something with y'all. Okay, so it looks like um, rates are going to where they should be. 
So that's good. We actually can't do this right now, though, because um, we're not there yet. Ugh, there's another dreaded 30-minute report coming up. The other thing is weather. Um, why is it giving us weather? It's night. I can't see. North Atlantic storms and cyclonic disturbances, cellular cloud problem. I uh, don't have problems. Patterns off the west coast of Africa. Good weather north of the track. Blowing sand in the desert. Indian Ocean subtractable high. Possibility of cellular pattern. Oh, here it is, night. Note any cloud patterns. The night illumination by the moon or stars. That's interesting. Lightning activity in Australia. Well, unfortunately, we can't do that. Uh, first orbit, intertropical convergence zone. Notice any illumination. Possibility of cellular cloud patterns. Okay. Well, we can look down. Yeah, I mean, I really can't see anything. Hey, look at that. We're actually, uh, roll, wait a minute, y'all. Y'all's going the other, what's going on with y'all? See, pitch, pitch is going the way it should be. Roll is going the way it should be. I can't figure out what the heck y'all is doing, why it's doing that. Or maybe that's because, no, that's not because of that. I mean, it looks good now from this perspective, but... I mean, I'm not in orbit attitude. That's the problem. And it's zero y'all, zero roll, and minus 34 pitch. So now pitch should, should be stopping, right? Because we're not going to be able to see outside of the window in a few minutes. Okay, so the weather reference is off for now because we can't see anything. The other thing that we can do is reference 21, which is landmark observation. And we can't do that because obviously we cannot see anything. Okay, it looks like pitch is kind of stabilizing itself now. Again, departing from the absolute sheer realism uh, of this um, this is an Orbiter 2003 mod, and I am using Orbiter 2010, so there may be some issues with the autopilot, but so far it's doing a good job. But what's really going to matter is re-entry, because if we can't get in the right direction, we're going to burn up. So that's what we hope. Uh, reference 21, cannot do, 20 can't do, 56, no. We gotta do that stupid check again. It's another 30 minute test. We'll just run through it. Let's just check the automatic fuel. 33 probably still. Manual fuel still zero. Um, yeah, that looks a little bit better. Y'all's coming back. Pitch is where it should be. Is it null? No. It looks kind of good. Earth path, indicator position, close to the horizon, that's where it should be. Retro sequence still 432. Let's check the cabin pressure. That's good. Check everything. 70 degrees. Isn't that a little bit cooler than it was earlier? No, because the other one was 75. Suit pressure still positive. Um, right, so the oxygen is a bit lower now. It's down to about um, 80 and 70. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Let's check all of our voltages again. Still looks to be all at about 24 volts, which is pretty good. Let's check our AC systems. And all the buses are good. 
Okay. There is the 30 minute report. Now, at one minute, three second, or one hour, three second, three minutes, there is a communications exchange in which we need to flip the switch again. All right. What are you doing now? Okay, roll is where it should be. So roll should be nulling out now. Yeah, it has control. I can't figure out what the heck it's doing. I also don't like how... Um, fuel level looks lower now. I don't like that. All right, let's see what we can do about the star tracking thing. The spacecraft will then be pitched down to the rate to hold the star in the same position relative to the window. The procedure is complete when the astronaut is satisfied with his ability to hold the star in a fixed position with respect to the spacecraft window. Then why are we in ASCS mode? We should be in, uh... That sounds like a manual thing. I don't think I can control the spacecraft when... Yeah, I can't control it when I'm in ASCS. I don't understand what the heck's going on. Two, one... And we've been up here for an hour. Well, we've been launched an hour ago. That rate command. Let's see if we can, um... Yeah, that's what I thought. We're going to have to go to fly-by-wire if we expect to see anything. So, I'm not sure why it said that, but it did. So, All right, let's go and find a star. How are we doing on fuel? Still about 30% now. Ooh, how about that star? Actually, I'm technically not supposed to be able to see that star because of the uh, lack of a window there. But I guess if I really wanted to, I could press my face up against it and then... Uh... Ooh, Ryan's Bell. Let's go, let's go to that. Still okay. Pause the video because this is going to take ages and years. Okay, so it's in view. So it said the test is complete when the astronaut feels that he has the ability to hold the star in a position that he wants. It kind of sucks that manual controls out because um, uh, it's really handy fly-by-wire system. So now I have to do the old-fashioned, uh, I say old-fashioned, but this is old-fashioned. The capsule, I mean, not the method. Oh, is that city lights? That was actually one of the activities is to look for city lights. I think, yeah, that's the landmark thing. Okay, yeah, I can hold the belt right on the edge of the window, so I'm good to go. Um, now, let's look at that other reference. Oh, 103, it is time to switch to HF. Okay, we're now on 
chef. Okay. Reference number 23. Let's see what we can look at. Or was it 21? Ah, lights at Brisbane. Oh, yes, yes. So, indeed, I can actually see some city lights down there. It's a funny note here that says... Cities should be visible, but at night lights might not be visible, even though city and suburbs have over 200,000 people. Suggest having airfields in vicinity turn on high-intensity landing runway lights, if available. Hey guys, turn your lights on. I can take a picture of you and then just give it to you or something. Heck, let's take a screenshot. I don't know why I did that, because I have a video, so we can just review the video. Wow, something looks really weird. Like, all of a sudden, the the sky out here just looks, like, super clear. I don't know why that is. It's, like, the stars are, like, more brilliant than they've been before. I don't know why that is. Now, um... At 1 minute 10 seconds is star navigation. So let's see what star navigation is. That's number 18. This is kind of cool. It's, it's, it's a little bit like a lab report, except we don't have to write something up. Wait a minute. This is star tracking again. I already did this. Star navigation, see reference Huh. I guess now I wanted me to do star navigation. Well, I mean, it's still here. It's not about. It's about not to be because it's going. It's going to set. But close enough. And my my rates are really nulled out. I'm hardly moving at all. Which is pretty good. So I won't have to use um, more fuel. Uh, I'm really starting to get worried about that. If we go under twenty percent. I think we need about 10 or 15 to re-enter. So if we go under 20%, we're going to have to abort. Unfortunately, I don't have the abort um, criteria in front of me, so I don't know what that is. At 108, astronaut returns to UHF. And then at one, one minute 16, one hour 16 minutes, um, is a possible begin preparation for possible re-entry. I don't think we need to do that now, but we'll, we'll, we'll have a look. Okay, so, so what, what happens at 1, oh, it's 08, oh, I'm sorry. Is that Wellington? I'm pretty darn sure that's Wellington. I have a map, so uh, I don't know. Actually, you know what? I have this thing. That looks like New Zealand. Oh wait, no, we're not far south enough. What is that? That is that Samoa? Man, those little islands are actually really, really, really bright. I didn't think they'd be that bright. Tiny little Pacific. Oh, hang on a second. This is, uh, uh, this is 2010 imagery, not 1962. It is 62. Well, it feels like the 50s. All right, this video is gonna end now. I'm just gonna start up this next one because um, stuff is already happening. So. I think what I'm going to do now, um, it's 107 or 108? It's 108. And it's to UHF? Yeah, UHF high. So, after I switch back to UHF high, um, I'm going to stop because they're doing the um, preparations for possible re-entry. Uh, and I'll come back at sunrise and then... From then on out, we'll only do the most interesting things because 
I can tell this video is already getting long. And we're only an hour into the flight. We still have three and a half hours left. So I have a long flight ahead of me. I also want to leave it in AS... Actually, do I... Do I want to leave it on ASCS after? Actually, you know what I need to do is put it in orbit attitude myself and then see what ASCS does when I switch back to it. Okay, 108 UHF high. Wow, look at that. The amperage even changes. Uh, battery bus bolts look good still. That's good. So now oxygen is at 80 and 60 for reference. 80 and 60. I hope we have enough. Steam vent temp. Wait, so primary and secondary. Don't I have a suit oxygen as well? Well, I want to stay up here as long as we can. Um, but... 116 is the go no go. So, or no, it's not. The go no go is at 127. But at 116, we have to start thinking about it. So, guess I'll see you guys then. So you remember how when when everyone's young, they have that time when they when they climb this tree that's really hard to climb, and then when they get to the top of it, they're like. They look down, they're like, uh, how do I get down from here? And then you start wishing that you hadn't climbed up the tree. That's kind of how I feel now um, because of this. This is the only thing that I'm worried about right here, this control fuel. But then I did realize in an absolute worst case scenario, I could do a manual retrograde sequence, which is really dangerous. But if we come down to 5% fuel, I might have to, you know, turn around very slowly and then issue a roll, stabilization roll, and then just leave it from there and hope that everything else goes when it's supposed to. I'm curious to know when, when the um, when the astronaut did this I'm curious to know if, if, if he thought whoa so that's what they actually look like oh man that's cool I'm curious to know if he wondered whether or not those would repower like like if for, for some instance for some reason like you disconnected it but then you but then you reset the breaker and it didn't reset, like, say the handle broke or the interior mechanism, like, split, uh, that would be really, really scary because then you have no emergency um, shoot, and if that doesn't go, then the primary doesn't go, and you're going to die. Now I understand why the, why the 50s were so much more dangerous is because nowadays with the space shuttle, I mean, you can eject do all this stuff. You can eject when you're be clear you can't reject during eject during re-entry um, but I'm pretty sure they they have some sort of eject capability if you can't make it to a runway I'm not hundred percent sure but we'll find out when we do the space shuttle um, concepts 20 years from now 10 years from now we'll be at the moon Actually, we're pretty darn close to, uh, I think Kennedy's speech was in 62. It was in like August, wasn't it? I don't know, I wasn't there. Okay, 116. Alright, I'm going to, as of now, we don't need to re-enter, but I, w I want to solve this problem with, with ASCS, figure out why the heck it's not doing what it's supposed to do. Because I don't know what it's doing, it just has a mind of its own. So... I'm gonna stop the video, turn around. I don't, I don't have any problem with skipping this possible reentry, and then we'll come back at sunrise, which is actually in about three minutes. So, if not sooner, let's check the periscope. Oh, oh, look, it's sunrise.
It's actually going to be sooner. Okay. Well, then we'll skip putting it in ASCS mode for now. Um, there's a communications exchange at 25, and the go no goes at 127, and at 134, there's another 30 minute report. So here is Sunrise. going to look a little bit awkward with such a high field of view, 156 degrees. Which means the sun is going to be 1, 200, 1, 312 the width of the screen. So that's two pixels. kind of awkward timing. The sun just came out where I live now. It's making it bright and very difficult to see the screen. Okay. There's the sun there. Right in the hoop. Wait a minute, my screen is 1366 pixels. So, I guess three, three pixels across then. It's a little bit bigger. Put the filter on. Uh, look at it without being blinded. Okay, well the sun's up. All right, I'm going to do the ASCS mode stuff. Um, right now, we don't have to um, do anything until 125, then it's a communications change. So until then, I guess. Okay, so now it's time to go to our um, HF again. It's the communications change again. And at 127, there's a go no go. So let's check all of our power real quick. Okay, everything looks good, so we'll go ahead and wave wave off re-entering. So now I'm going to do a 30-minute report in about eight minutes. I'm also going to um, move the uh, capsule to ASCS, and now pretty much in orbit attitude, and then we'll we'll go from there. All the interesting things. So we're now two hours, 17 minutes into the flight, and it's time to do um, star. What is the star tracking? Uh, this is a little bit different. This is more of astronomy from space. So it's a just like eleven part um, segment. So it says the first 
thing is Star Trek. Oh, wait a minute. We did that already. Oh, hang on a second. This is a uh, number 19. Oh, wow. This thing's long. Yeah, 11 things. So it actually says emphasis should be on observing hazy, dim, poorly defined light and bright, well-known stars and planets are not of prime interest. Interesting. Sun's outer corona. This is not... This is most readily observable phenomena for dark adapted... Apparently I have to do it just before sunrise. It says it is not observable when the sun has risen. Actually, I already did this. Not like legit, but I did watch the sunrise and I did I did see it, so that is taken care of. Count the number of stars visible in the known constellation, such as a known constellation. Yeah, I'm not very happy about moving the spacecraft around right now because we're so stable, so it's kind of very difficult to do. We don't have to do this now. Um, at 2.24, we're supposed to be observing night lights. So that's still a few minutes away. All right, let's try and move the spacecraft. Feels still looking all right. Everything else is perfect. Uh, oxygen's getting a little bit low on the secondary, but that's going to be okay. Um, just as long as we don't have to go to O2 emergency. That's a uh, we want to be re-entering by the time that happens. If we get a known constellation, Virgo's not a very good one. Ooh, is that Pegasus? No, that's Corvus. I was about to say we could just count, count, count the ones inside the square of Pegasus, but it's not. Let's count the stars in Corvus, because we're coming up on 90 degrees of y'all, which is exactly where we're supposed to be. So, counting the stars actually of Corpus, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Cool, that's a cool number. So write that down. Then there's this other thing called um, zodical light. It says, faint glow from illuminated dust, comets and meteors observable further out than the sun's outer corona, and may be observed in the ecliptic. It is brightest at their horizon and dims to the... What the heck is Gengashin? Oh, here it is. The Gengashin, or count glow, is a dim 8 by 5 degree elliptical light in the elliptic. Really? 180 degrees from the sun. How have I never heard of that before? So they want to know what, what parallax that is. That's interesting. I can't do that. Orbiter's not realistic enough for that. 
Man, I'm starting to think that the checklists that I have exceed the capability of the simulator. I mean, they, they were real-life checklists, but, you know, they probably should be dulled down a little bit for the simulator. Then there's another thing called Liberation Comets. Verification of the existence of non-existence... Oh, verification of the existence or non-existence of the clouds or points is highly desirable. But probably a difficult task. Five degrees wide, located 60 degrees ahead and 60 degrees behind the ecliptic. Oh, that's interesting. That's the moon. That's the moon's Lagrange points with the Earth. That's um, moon L4 and L5. That's interesting. I wonder if it actually has anything to do with that. Speaking of which, where the heck is the moon? Where was the moon on February 19th, 1962? <laughs> well, that is extremely useful. The moon is actually right there. And 60 degrees ahead would be here, 60 degrees behind would be here. So yeah, again, the simulator is not realistic enough, but it would be interesting. They're actually visible. Or they would be if, if the simulator were real. And they were real, because they said they were reported, but not confirmed. Then there's another thing called Night Air Glow. Use the green pass filter. I don't have a filter. I'm not the real astronaut. Check for the orientation of the Earth's magnetic field. How am I supposed to do that? Oh yeah, compass. I don't see any air glow. I just see a black sphere. Well, it's not a black sphere, it's a black elliptical sphere. No, no air glow. No visible air glow, because there's always air glow. Then there's noctulent clouds, nacreous clouds. Those won't be visible at night. And that's more of a... How is that a celestial observation? It's more... Oh, that's why. It's because it's above the troposphere, therefore it's not weather. Star occultations by the atmosphere will occur, and they want to know what that looks like. Well, lucky down here, the Earth is visible. So the degree of occultation is of interest, but they don't know. All right, well, let's watch a star that's about to set. All right, yeah, I see it getting dimmer. See it getting dimmer. I'm watching this one, by the way. Okay, now it's gone. I was watching the one next to there. Well, that is kind of interesting. You can actually see a little bit of occultation. All right, well... <clears throat> The next thing is going to be city lights, and we should be over Perth Fremantle, so I don't see anything yet. Turn on your runway lights. Come on, guys. I'll pause it until I see something. So we passed the whole way over Australia, and I didn't see any night lights this time, which is a little bit interesting, but it must have been the facing direction of the capsule. We have some new stuff to do for night observations for... Uh, references 18, 19, 20, and 21. So, can take a look at that. 18 is star tracking. We did that. That's done. Uh, 19, we already did some of. 20 is the weather notes. It's dark right now. And 21, landmarks. So... I mean, I can't see anything. We're probably going to have to wait till dawn. Because I cannot see a thing. Other than the moon. Which, of course, looks like the moon. Except for the fact that I'm in 60 degree field of view. So I can barely see it.
yeah, so I mean, I guess there's nothing to do uh, until dawn. Dawn is coming up at um, 2.46, so that's in about eight minutes. Uh, and then there's some more stuff going on. So meanwhile, I'm also taking a peek at the orbit to see what that looks like. Again, 170 kilometers looks good. It is getting perturbed by the atmosphere. As you can see the eccentricity value is higher, but as of now, we don't really need to worry about it. We're high enough that we don't need to concern ourselves with being pulled out of orbit. Okay, so it's uh, 2 hours 47 minutes in now. Um, sunrise just happened. So uh, at 2.52, um, we want to go to references 20 and 21. Um, reference 20, we have a uh, second orbit, um, this is 246, uh, they want to know about Pacific cloud streaks, which are apparently channels of clouds, well that's a beautiful view of the Milky Way right here, I guess that's worth noting, hey guys, I found a cloud, it's called the Milky Way, it looks really awesome from space. So there's that. There's also, um, further along across the Pacific Ocean, uh, waters of the Colorado River. Um, if they're visible where they flow into the Gulf of California, and they apparently are sit shooting some rockets out of um, New Mexico to take a look at that. And then we'll be able to have a comparison to see if what I see is um, any better than, than what they can. Okay, so it's now time for those references, um, as mentioned earlier. Uh, so for 20, um, those types of clouds. Oh wow, they're actually here. Um, Looks like there's one here, and there's another one here, and we are heading, let me see, this is going to be east, west, so they're roughly north-south, uh, pretty much. So that one there is isolated, but there's one there, one there. We're pretty much mid-Pacific Ocean. Oh yeah, I for forgot about this third um, image is really nice. You can see them right here. See, this puts the field of view back to 30. That's what I'm more used to. So this looks a lot more familiar than this, which is just super wide. I can't tell. Is that, yeah, the moon's setting. All right. We seem to be yawing a bit, so I'm going to see if I can kill that. Okay. That was pretty easy and simple. Now the next event to take place on the second orbit is the waters of the Colorado River. We're not there yet. For weather notes. Um, note altitude of the clouds. They look low to mid, I don't know, 10,000. All the clouds in a given group at the same altitude. Let's see. Yeah, if you consider that a group, they look to be pretty much all around the same altitude. I would say yes. And then at 309, we have an intersection with the first ground track. And they want to know uh, they just want me to know that 
I, I'm probably going to see similar things. Surprise, surprise. Okay, so we're not going to be doing anything until the Colorado River. Um, we have a go-no-go -no -go coming up in five minutes. Uh, there should be another 30-minute report coming up. Um, where are we? Two, two hours, 54 minutes. It's probably right after the go-no-go. -no -go. Area G. Yep. 307 is the thing. And then at 309 we'll be over probably Mexico, North America. Alright, so um, the next thing that we're going to do um, when I bring the video back, we're going to jump ahead to skip the go no go on video go all the way to uh, weather observation number 20 what is that about okay. uh, the intersection yeah we'll go forward to about 307 when we're going to be over the Colorado River that's pretty much the next event to occur so I will go ahead and uh, we'll skip ahead to there